Hey folks, here are OS Reviews. Today we're watching our retro review of a very classic Nokia handset. This is the Nokia 8290 here in the United States, uh, and internationally it's also known as the Nokia 8210. This is actually a single band phone that can only work with frequencies of uh, 1900, so it's only going to work with AT&T or T-Mobile, uh, at least here in the United States. It's a pretty interesting Nokia phone because it was very inexpensive back when it was released in 2002, and the original 8210, which again has very similar features but was the international version it was actually released in 1999 and at the time of the release this phone was the smallest that Nokia had ever produced. Uh, the phone itself was not remarkable for its features. There's actually no web browser, there's no Bluetooth, there's no Wi-Fi or anything fancy like that and it uses a monochrome screen but it does have something that's kind of neat. You can actually change off the faceplate and customize it with different versions that Nokia sold for about $20 each or for third-party different uh, skins that you could purchase online through Amazon and also through eBay which temp which uh, typically range from $5 to $10. And you can see that the version that we have here is a neon green that's also transparent, kind of reminiscent of the Matrix. Uh, it's kind of an interesting look. It's also transparent. And what's very neat is that Nokia actually embedded their logo below the surface of the keypad. So you can actually see it in case you have a transparent cover, which we have on. Again, it's pretty easy to swap out. We simply tap on the top here with that key, and then it pops off, and you can change the color and customize your phone. With that being said, very basic features on here just for calling, basic texting, uh, all those features will work. A very few basic organizational features like a calendar, you can store up to 20 or so memos, and uh, you can also store about 20 or so contacts in the phone book, and you can store up to more uh, using a SIM card up to 150, I believe. And also you had a few basic games like Snake, and the backlight on this phone is also green, so it kind of matches the entire design language of the entire greenish skin that we have on. So kind of an interesting look. Uh, the phone itself, again, was very, very inexpensive, only about 150 bucks unlocked, uh, which was very cheap at the time and also affordable. At the same time, I would say that the more higher-end version of the 8290 would be the 8890 which we also reviewed in a retro review a few weeks ago. And you can see how uh, they're very similar in terms of portfolio and also identical almost in terms of hardware and the internal specs for the uh, technology underneath the hood. But what's really different here is the price tag for the 8890 is a lot uh, more steep just because it's crafted out of aluminum, feels more premium, whereas the 8290 uh, is the consumer version that has a plastic build and is more colorful and also vibrant. Taking a look at the design, now the worst, fun the worst part of this phone is going to be the keypad because it's very small. Even though the keys are risen above the surface, they're kind of uh, difficult to text really quickly, so they feel a little bit mushy and uh, also a little bit stiff. With that being said, the backlight is fairly bright and you can see it in darker environments. The top here features access to uh, talk and end keys, up and down keys for navigation, and also to hotkeys for different various features on screen. And these are pretty responsive, they're nicely laid out, and they are nicely designed. The very top features a year piece and an interesting kind of design going on from Nokia. The top features power on and off switch. There is no antenna on this phone. And on the left hand side you have access to a lanyard slot and also a volume rocker that's very tactile and easy to press. The bottom features the infamous proprietary ports that Nokia uses for charging and also for the headphone, uh, which is a bit of a shame. And there's nothing else on the other side. Very classical no uh, kind of system going on by Nokia. It's very uh, traditional. We press on the menu key, you have access to your messages, uh, your call log, your recently called people, your profiles in terms of ringtones and your alarms. You can also set the volume pretty easily over here. It goes up to 10 bars. You can actually get pretty loud, which is nice uh, if you want to use it as a speaker phone. There's also access to settings, so that basically gives you access to the alarm clock, uh, auto update for the time, uh, time and date, phone settings, security settings as far as putting a password to turn the phone on, and so on and so forth. If we wanted to go back, let's try and go back there. Time is not set on here. And we also have access to forwarding, so if someone calls you, you can also forward a call to another number. And games, this includes the memory, the snake, the logic, and also the react. These are pretty classic Nokia games. They're always fun to play, even in today's standards. We have so one or two players. just use the D-pad, like two, uh, four, and six, just to navigate around the screen. And overall, it's a nice experience. I think that it's pretty responsive, uh, and it's easy to play. Uh, always a nice way to, again, waste a little bit of time. Get out of that, we can also press on menu to check out some other applications. Uh, the other games are basically very similar for React, you just have to have a very quick, as the name suggests, reaction rate, and some of them are memory related. There's also access to a calculator, a uh, very basic one at that, just tapping on the numbers to create any basic operations, uh, add, subtract, equal, multiply, divide, 
And there's also a foreign con uh, converter and an exchange rate converter, which is kind of interesting. So going back there, we also have access to a cap uh, calendar. Again, you can add some quick memos just to save uh, some basic data for organizational functions, but you do need to have the time and date set first. Um, it doesn't seem to be correctly working right now uh, as far as over the uh, cellular connectivity that we have here using T-Mobile. Uh, and there's also the coolest feature on here, which is infrared. Uh, there's an infrared port on the side of the phone, and if you actually have it connected to another Nokia device, you can actually beam and transfer information to and from a device, including your contacts, your name, and you can also beam information into the device uh, using the infrared port if you have a Palm PDA or a Windows Mobile PDA that has an infrared port and you can beam information like contacts, address numbers, and that gets automatically saved. And it works pretty well, but you do need the infrared to literally be next to it and touching. If it's kind of a few feet away, it's not gonna work. If it's a few centimeters away, it might not work. So it's something that's a very early stage of wireless that was built into this. A quick messages, you can also view those, and that's basically it. T9 style D-pad, so you'll be texting and dialing on here. There is a bit of predictive text, although it's not too great, and it takes a bit longer to get your text messages out. Pressing on names goes to your address book. Going up and down also goes through your address book. Again, you're not gonna have a web browser on here, so pretty limited as far as other options are concerned. Anyways, this is a classic Nokia device uh, from the backlight to the fun customizable uh, plates that you can remove, and of course, that famous candy bar and four factor. This has been a retro review look back at the Nokia 8210-8290. Thank you for watching your OS review.